Welcome back to my channel. And if you are visiting this channel for the first time, you are also highly welcome. In this lecture, we'll be looking at the tibia nerve. Let's try and use this image here by the side for illustration. Let's say this is where we have the sciatic nerve here, harrowed in black. The sciatic nerve is one of the branches from the sacral plexus. And at the upper border of the popliteal fossa, at this region here, along the posterior region of the lower limb, you see it divided structurally into a larger tibia nerve and a smaller common fibula nerve. So you see that these two nerves are emergence from the sciatic nerve. And for the purpose of this lecture, we would be focusing on the tibia nerve. So ride on with me as I unfold the course of the tibia nerve and also the branches that it gives along that course. Driving into the course of the tibia nerve and also the branches that it gives, let's try and use this slide to summarize the innovations of the tibia nerve. So for the innovations of the tibia nerve, it seems to provide both bottle innovations and also sensory innovations. So if you try to use this image here by the side for illustration, we say that the region here that is highlighted in yellow is the sciatic nerve. We also know that the sciatic nerve is what further subdivide into the tibia nerve and also the common fibula nerve. This we've tried to highlight in our previous slide. So in this image, the region here that is highlighted in yellow is the sciatic nerve. The sciatic nerve is like a two-in-one nerve that is wrapped around by a single sheet. We've tried to highlight this in our lecture on the sciatic nerve. If you've not checked that lecture, or please kindly go and do so to keep yourself updated. For the sciatic nerve, we say in that lecture that it is a two-in-one nerve that is wrapped around a single sheet. So at the region of the tie, you see it as a sciatic nerve having both tibia component and also the common fibula component. So the tibia component around the region of the tie is seen to provide motor innovations for the posterior muscles of the tie. And this is where the tibia component of the sciatic nerve is seen to provide bottle innovations for the posterior muscles of the tie. So if you go down along the posterior region of the lower limb, specifically at the upper border of the popliteal fossa, you see the sciatic nerve then dividing into the tibia nerve and also the common fibula nerve. So the tibia nerve at this lower region, specifically in the leg region now, will be giving motor innervations to muscles in the posterior region of the leg. So you can see how it works. The tibia component of the sciatic nerve is seen to provide motor innervations for the posterior muscles of the thigh, well after its divisions or emergence from the sciatic nerve, also along the posterior region of the lower limb, it is seen to provide motor innervations for the posterior muscles of the leg. So in the leg region, it's seen to give motor innervations to the posterior muscle. And also in the thigh, the tibia component of the sciatic nerve, even though at that point, it is structurally contained in a single sheet with the common fibula nerve but it is established that it has a tibia component and also a common fibula component. So it is the tibia component of the sciatic nerve within the region of the thigh that is seen to provide motor innervations for the posterior muscles of the thigh. So in the leg, it is also seen to provide motor innervations for the posterior muscles of the leg. And as it drives further down, it is also seen to give motor innervations to some intrinsic muscles of the foot. And this is where it gives that supply that is highlighted here in dotted red. For sensory innervations, the tibia nerve is seen to provide sensory innervations for the sole of the foot. And this is what is highlighted here in dotted red. So you can see that the tibia nerve is taking up specific regions within the lower limb where it provides motor and also sensory innervations. To so also add to this, the tibia nerve is seen to contribute to the formation of the sural nerve. The sural nerve is formed by branches from both the tibia and also the common fibula nerve. And after the emergence of the sural nerve, this sural nerve is a cutaneous or a sensory nerve. So it is seen to provide cutaneous innervations for the posterior lateral region of the leg, the lateral edge of the dosum of the foot, and also the little toe. And so this slide gives a summary of the innovations of the tibia nerve. So let's drive further to see how the tibia nerve is formed. We already stated in our previous slide that tibia nerve is formed from the sciatic nerve. 
and the sciatic nerve is one of the branches from the sacral plexus. So let's drive in to see how the tibial nerve is formed because we already established in our previous slide that we have a tibia component of the sciatic nerve. This means that the tibia nerve is rooted from a subcomponent that is formed by the sciatic nerve. So we'll would be driving deep in establishing how the sciatic nerve is formed so as to be able to highlight the roots or how the tibia nerve is formed. So the tibia nerve is formed from the ventral divisions of the anterior rami from L4, L5, S1, S2, and S3 spinal nerves. So if you try to use this image down here for illustration, let's say this is where we have the ventral rami. We know that the ventral rami is formed from the spinal nerves. If you go back to our lecture on the sciatic nerve, we already established this in details. We say that the spinal nerves would divide into two rami, which include the ventral and the dosal rami. So we have the ventral ramus and we also have the dosal ramus. But what we are concerned with as it relates to the emergence of the tibia nerve is the ventral ramus. So we have ventral rami formed from L4, L5, S1, S2, and also S3. And at this point, the ventral rami is also seen to further divide into the ventral divisions and also the dosal divisions. So if you try to represent this image here to illustrate this presentation, this is where we have the rami here at the middle. And of course, the ventral rami will further divide into the ventral division, which is highlighted here in red, and also the dosal division, which is highlighted here in blue. So we have the ventral and the dosal divisions, of course, formed from the ventral rami, which extends from L4, to S3. And this is what is presented here in this image. The tibia nerve is formed from the ventral divisions, and this is how it emerges. So we have the ventral divisions here on this side. We say that this is highlighted here in red. So we have the ventral divisions from the ventral rami, from L4, L5, S1, S2, and also S3 spinal nerves. And this is where we have the emergence of the tibia nerve here, arrowed in red. So we have the emergence of the tibia component of the sciatic nerve from the sacral plexus. And this is where we have the tibia nerve roots, which will be forming the tibia component of the sciatic nerve. So this is how the tibia nerve would emerge from the formation of the sciatic nerve. So going back to the second subcomponent of the sciatic nerve, which is the common fibular nerve, Remember, we stated that the anterior rami would divide further into the anterior divisions and posterior divisions, which could also translate to the ventral and also the dosal divisions. We already highlighted the formation of the tibia nerve from the ventral divisions, of course, which is highlighted or arrowed here in red. Then on the other side, we have the formation of the common fibular nerve. The common fibular nerve is an emergence from the dosal divisions of the anterior rami. And this is how it emerges. You have the dosal divisions of the anterior rami from L4, L5, S1, and also S2. And this is what is seen to be heralded here in yellow. This is where we have the root of the common fibular nerve, which of course will be forming the common fibular component of the sciatic nerve. So these two roots, we then unite at this region that is arrowed in black to form the sciatic nerve. So this is where we have the emergence of the sciatic nerve. So if you're driving deep into the formation of the sciatic nerve, you see that it is formed from two roots, which of course is the tibia root and also the common fibular root. And as they come together, they form the sciatic nerve. So if you want to trace back the origin of the tibia nerve, we can drive deep into the formation of the tibia nerve root, which is a subcomponent of the sciatic nerve. And that is how it goes. So we can say that the tibia nerve emerges from the ventral divisions of the anterior rami from L4, L5, S1, S2, and also S3 spinal nerves. So you can see that all about the tibia nerve is ventral. And after the emergence of the sciatic nerve within the pelvic cavity, we already said that the sciatic nerve is an emergence from the sacral plexus. The sacral plexus is located at the posterior lateral wall of the pelvic cavity. So after it emerges, you see it parting through the greater sciatic foramen. And if you try to use this image by the side here for illustration, this is where we have the emergence of the sciatic nerve here, harrowed in blue. And after it emerges within the pelvic cavity, you see it parting through the greater sciatic foramen. 
And this is where it's able to assess the posterior region of the lower limb. And from here, you see it descending down posteriorly along the thigh. And after this, it runs down descending at the upper border or the upper region of the popliteal fossa, which is the region here, harrowed in black. You see it dividing into a larger tibia nerve and a smaller common fibular nerve. So you see that the tibia nerve is larger in size, while the common fibular nerve is smaller in size. These two nerves are emergence of the sciatic nerve. So let's drive in further to see how the tibia nerve runs. So some of the branches that emerge from the tibia nerve and also what they supply. So let's drive down to where we have the tibia component of the sciatic nerve. And this is at the region of the thigh. So let's see the different branches that emerge from the tibia portion or tibia component of the sciatic nerve. Remember, we already established that this structure here, harrowed in purple, is the sciatic nerve. After it emerges from the pelvic cavity, you see it exiting the pelvic cavity through the greater sciatic foramen. And at this point, it's able to be positioned around the posterior region of the thigh. In the posterior region of the thigh, the sciatic nerve is known or seen to have a tibia component and also a common fibular component. So for the tibia component, let's see the branches that this component gives and also the muscles that it innervates around this region. It is seen to provide motor innervation for the adductor magnus it's also seen to provide motor innervations for the hamstring muscles. We know that the hamstring muscles is a combination or a collection of muscles that are seen around the posterior region of the thigh. So the hamstring muscles are also seen to receive motor innervations from the tibia component of the sciatic nerve around the posterior region of the thigh. And this is what is seen to be highlighted here in dotted red. We know that the hamstring muscle is made up of the biceps femoris it's made up of the semitendinosus and also the semimembranosus. So these three muscles are seen to be structurally collected together as one and are so referred to as the hamstring muscles. The motor innervations of these hamstring muscles is provided by the tibia component of the sciatic nerve, except the short edge of the biceps femoris. We know that the biceps femoris has a short head and also a long head, but the long head is what is innervated by the tibia component of the sciatic nerve. Because around the posterior thigh region, the tibia nerve and also the common fibula nerve are still collected together as a two-in-one nerve that is wrapped around the single sheet. So we need to also drive in into this region, establishing the specific nerves that emerge from both the tibia component and also the common fibular component. So for the region of the posterior thigh, the tibia component of the sciatic nerve, because they are still collected together at this point, is seen to innervate the adductor magnus and also the hamstring muscle, although with the exception of the short head of the biceps femoris. And this, of course, will be innervated by the branch from the common fibular nerve. When we get to our lecture on the common fibular nerve, we would be highlighting this. But just know that the hamstring muscles, except the short head of the biceps femoris, is innervated by the tibia nerve. So let's drive in further to see the cause that the sciatic nerve runs. Of course, specifically highlighting the tibia portion of the sciatic nerve. So for the tibia nerve, after it emerges from the sciatic nerve around the popliteal fossa, let's see the different branches that its tibia nerve would give around this region. So this is where we have the popliteal fossa. The popliteal fossa is an indentation that is created around the posterior region of the nail joint. And this is what is demarcated here in dotted red. We know that at this region here that is harrowed in red is where we have the sciatic nerve. And at the initial stage, it will be passing through the region of the thigh. And we've tried to highlight the different branches that emerge from the tibia component of the sciatic nerve at this region. So when it gets to the upper border of the popliteal fossa, you see the sciatic nerve dividing into the tibia nerve. And this is what is harrowed here in green. And also the common fibular nerve that is harrowed here in purple. So driving in specifically on the tibia nerve around this region, that is harrowed here in green and also highlighted here in red. The first branch 
that is seen to emerge from the tibia nerve is the median subcutaneous or snap. And this is what is seen at this point. So you see the median subcutaneous or snap emerging. And of course, if you try to create an alignment around this region, this is where we have the medial region, and this is where we have the lateral region. So it is a medial subcutaneous snap because it's directed towards the medial side. And when we have the establishment of a medial subcutaneous snap, we should be expecting to have a lateral subcutaneous snap. This is what I tell my students when I take them in class. If there is no lateral subcutaneous snap, this is not going to be tagged the medial subcutaneous snap. It may just be giving a subcutaneous snap. So for having a medial subcutaneous snap, we should expect the formation or the establishment of a lateral subcutaneous snap. So this is where we have the medial subcutaneous snap here highlighted at this point. Of course, an emergence of the tibia nerve within the popliteal fossa. So what this medial subcutaneous snap does is to unite with the lateral subcutaneous snap that would be an emergence from the common fibular nerve. Remember, we have the common fibular nerve here, up here that is hard here in purple as an emergence from the sciatic nerve. This is going to be giving off a lateral subcutaneous snap. And this is what is seen to be highlighted here in purple. It is a lateral subcutaneous snap because it is on the lateral side. Remember, we already established this placement. So we have the medial subcutaneous snap uniting with the lateral subcutaneous snap. And there's going to be a communicating nerve which will be referred to as a communicating subcutaneous snap that will be linking these two nerves together. And this will lead to the formation of the sura nerve. And this is where we have the emergence of the sura nerve here highlighted in red. You can see that the tibia nerve is giving a contributory branch to unite with also another branch from the common fibular nerve. And this is where they now form the sura nerve. This sura nerve is a cutaneous nerve that is seen to provide sensory innervations to the posterior lateral aspect of the leg and also the lateral edge of the dosum of the foot. It is also seen to provide sensory innervation to the lateral aspect of the little toe. So this is how we have the emergence of the sura nerve, which of course is a sensory nerve in quotes, giving sensory innervations to specific regions of the lower limb as we highlighted. So this is where we have the sura nerve here, Harold in black. So let's drive down to see how the tibia nerve would run and also some of the other branches that will emerge from it. So driving further now will not be the region of the leg because we are trying to establish the branches that it gives when it is still in contact with the common fibular nerve within the posterior tie, also within the popliteal fossa after its emergence from the sciatic nerve. So driving further down around the posterior region of the leg, let's see how the tibia nerve would run and also some of the branches that would emerge from it. So if you try to use this image here by the side, this is where we have the sciatic nerve here, harrowed in green. The sciatic nerve, we say, would divide into the tibia nerve that is harrowed in red and also the common fibular nerve that is harrowed in blue. We are not concerned here for the purpose of this lecture with the common fibular nerve that would come in a separate lecture. So please do watch out for this. But for the purpose of this class, we are focusing on the tibia nerve. We already described its emergence within the popliteal fossa, which is the medial subcutaneous snap. So driving down on the tibia nerve, after the emergence of the medial subcutaneous snap that is already at this point, you see the tibia nerve driving further down. And as it drives further down, you see that it packs deep to the tendinous heart of the soleus muscle. This is where we have the soleus muscle here highlighted in green. But the soleus muscle is known to emerge from a tendinous heart around the popliteal fossa. So this is where we have this tendinous heart here, extending from the fibula here around the lateral side, then driving medially to where we have the tibia. So this tendinous heart is created at this point. And of course, you see the tibia now driving deep to this tendinous heart. So you see it driving deep to it, and of course, descending medially. This is what is seen to be highlighted here in dotted red. So this is where we have the medial side, and this is where we have the lateral side. So we have it driving, of course, directed towards the medial side. And it is through this direction towards the medial side that the tibia nerve will enter into the foot region. So you see the tibia nerve finally entering into the region of the foot around the medial region. 
It is because of the part that it runs around the posterior region of the leg. So it is directed medially, and it is through this course or this part that is able to assess the region of the foot. So you see that the hand, by the time we get to the foot region, you see that the tibia nerve would be assessing the foot region through the medial side. But when we get to that, we'll be highlighting more on this. But this is how it runs. So let's drive in to see the branches that it gives along this course. So basically, it gives motor innervations to the muscles in the posterior region of the leg. And these muscles are known to exact plantar flexion. So they help to control the process of plantar flexing. So injury to the tibia nerve around this region, of course, will be limiting this function. If you look at the tibia nerve around this region, within the popliteal fossa, after giving off an emergence of the medial suracutaneous nerve, you see it's giving off three branches to supply muscles around the posterior region of the leg before it packs deep to the tendinous heart of the soleus muscle. It gives off a branch to the popliteus here that is already in dotted red. It also gives off another branch to the plantaris. Then finally, it gives off another branch to the gastronomius. So you see that it gives off three branches before it packs deep to the tendinous hack of the soleus muscle. So these are the three branches that it gives around that region. Of course, after the emergence of the medial suracutaneous nerve up here. So you see it supplying muscles around the posterior region of the leg. So after parting through or parting deep to the tendinous sac of the soleus muscle, you see it also giving off a number of branches. And these branches are seen to supply the soleus itself. And this is the soleus muscle here that is highlighted here in green. So it gives off a motor branch that will supply the soleus muscle. Then it also gives off another branch that will give motor innervations to the tibialis posterior. Then it gives off another branch that will give motor innervation to the flexor digitorium longus. Finally, you have another branch that will be supplying the flexor allosis longus. So you see it's giving off a number of branches. As it runs down along the posterior region of the leg, of course, driving towards the medial side, because it is around this side, I would say, it will be assessing the region of the foot. So these are the branches and also the parts that it runs around the posterior region of the leg. So let's drive further to see what happens as the tibia nerve assesses the foot. So around the region of the foot, the tibia nerve is seen to exhibit some form of dramatic course. So we say that around the posterior region of the leg, it is already establishing itself in assessing the region of the foot around the medial side. Because as it runs down, it is directed towards the medial side. And if you look at this configuration here, this is the medial side of the foot. So you see it running at this region, parting deep to the flexor retinaculum. So this is the flexor retinaculum here that is harrowed here in black. This flexor retinaculum is like a fascia that is seen to run from the medial myloleus to the calcaneus. And it runs along this alignment here that is elected in blue. So this is where we have the medial myloleus here, up here. And of course, this is where we have the calcaneus down here. And you have this fascia running across this axis. And this axis is referred to as the medial myelulous calcanea axis. And along this axis, we have the path through which the flexor rectinaculum would run. And at this point, you see this fascia converting the groove that is created by the bones around this region into a canal. And this is what gives allowance to the tibia nerve around this region. We have a number of structures parting deep to the flexor rectinaculum, one of which is the tibia nerve. So this is where we have the medial region as we highlighted. And of course, it's around this medial side that the tibia nerve is able to assess the foot as we've described. So we have the establishment of a canal that is created by the flexor rectinaculum. So this canal is what gives allowance for the passage of the tibia nerve. And deep to the flexor retinaculum, still within this canal, the tibia nerve is seen to give off a branch, which is referred to as the medial calcaneal nerve. This medial calcaneal nerve, just as the name implies, is seen to innervate the skin around the eel. So it gives sensory innervations to the eel. So after this emergence, the tibia nerve 
we continue to run through this canal that is created by the flexor rectinaculum. And at the point of exit, at this point, you see it dividing or terminating finally into the media plantar nerve, which of course is larger. And this is the media plantar nerve. And also a lateral plantar nerve, which of course is smaller. And this is a lateral plantar nerve. So you see that at the end, after exiting the canal that is created by the flexor rectinaculum, of course, running along the media myelolus calcana axis is able to divide finally into two branches after giving off the medial carcana nerve within this canal to give sensory innovations to the heel. So using this image diet for better illustration, this is where we have the foot. This is the medial side. And we already established that is around the medial side that the tibia nerve is able to assess the foot. So around this region, you have the tibia nerve coming, of course, from the posterior region of the leg, being directed towards the medial side. And this is where it's able to exit that region. Then finally entering into the foot region around the medial side. We have the tibia nerve here, heralded in black, which of course will divide finally after exiting the flexor rectinaculum. You see it dividing into the larger medial plantar nerve and also a smaller lateral plantar nerve. This is on the medial side, and that is why it is so named the medial plantar nerve. And this is on the lateral side, and that is why it is also named the lateral plantar nerve. So you see that these nerves, they take up specific regions around the foot. And of course, they provide innovations for that region. So let's drive further on the medial and the lateral plantar nerve to see what they also specifically innovate. So for the medial plantar nerve, so using this image up here for illustration, this is the medial region and this is the lateral region. The medial region is where we have the medial plantar nerve, of course, patting along. And this is where we have the medial plantar nerve, you heard at this point. The medial plantar nerve is seen to give off muscular branches. These muscular branches are seen to innervate some intrinsic muscles of the foot. And this includes the abductor allosis. It's also seen to innervate the flexor digitorium brevis, the flexor allosis brevis, and also the first lung breakup. So you see the medial plantar nerve giving muscular innervations to some intrinsic muscles of the foot. It also goes further to give articular branches for the tarsa and the metatarsal joints. Remember at the foot region, we have tarsa and metatarsal bones, and these bones are linked together at specific joints. So it seems to also give articular branches to innervate these joints. Then finally, you have it giving off sensory innervation to the bulk of the region of the soul. Remember we said that the tibia nerve is seen to supply the soul of the foot, and it is at this point that this will be highlighted. So let's use this image down here for illustration. This is where we have the medial side, and this is where we have the lateral side. It is good for us to highlight or establish the anatomical position of the leg before we drive in into this. So having the medial side on this side and also the lateral side on the other side. So this region here that is carried at this point is the medial region, but of course more to the anterior part. So the medial plantar nerve is seen to give sensory innervations to the medial anterior to toe of the sole. And this is the region here that is harrowed at this point. It's also seen to supply the medial three and also the medial half of the fourth toe. If you look at the toes here, the toes are already numbered in this image. This is the first, the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth. It is giving sensory innovations to the medial three and this is the medial three, and also medial half of the fourth toe. So this marks the limit of the sensory innervation of the medial plantar nerve. So this is how it is captured. And it's good for us to be able to establish this. So you can see that the medial plantar nerve, after giving off muscular branches and also articular branches, it's finally seen to give sensory innervation to the bulk of the sole of the foot. And if you drive deep further to the sensory innervations of the other regions of the sole of the foot, you see that at this region behind, around the heel, we have this sensory innervation supplied by the medial calcana nerve. Remember the medial calcana nerve is a branch of the tibia nerve 
that is giving off deep to the flexor rectinaculum. Remember the tibia now part deep to the flexor rectinaculum. And within this space, it seems to give off a medial carcana now. This gives sensory innervations to the heel. And this is what is seen to be captured here in this image. So the lateral one third of the sole of the foot will be supplied by the lateral plantar nerve. And this will be highlighting in the next slide. Then going back to the other regions, this region that is highlighted here in black, innervation of this area is supplied by the saphenous nerve. This saphenous nerve is a branch of the femoral nerve. Then we also have the lateral hedge here. And the sensory innervation is by the sural nerve. Remember, we described the sural nerve as a sensory nerve. And the sural nerve, we already said, is formed from both the tibia and also the common fibular nerve. And they provide sensory innervations for the posterior lateral side of the leg and also the lateral hedge of the foot. And this is where it's taking its position around the space. So it's good for us to be able to highlight the specific sensory innervations of the different regions of the sole of the foot. So we see that the bulk of the sole of the foot is already being taken up by the medial plantar nerve. And this is what is expressed here in this image. So let's drive further to the lateral plantar nerve to see the different branches that it also gives around the foot region. So for the lateral plantar nerve, if you look at this image up here, this is where we have the emergence of the tibia nerve around the medial side. We already said this is the medial side and this is the lateral side. The tibia nerve, we give terminal divisions, which of course is the medial plantar nerve that is harrowed here in yellow, and also the lateral plantar nerve that is also harrowed here in yellow. You see that the medial plantar nerve will run along the medial side of the foot, while the lateral plantar nerve we cross to the lateral region of the foot because it is a lateral plantar nerve. And the name, of course, is drafted based on how it is positioned. Even though it emerges from the media side, you see that after the tibia nerve emerges around the media side of the foot, the media plantar nerve will cut along the media side, while the lateral plantar nerve will cross to its position. So you have the lateral plantar nerve around this region that is harrowed here in yellow. And you see it patting along, of course, the lateral side of the foot. So the first set of branches that it gives off are muscular branches. And these muscular branches are seen to innervate some also intrinsic muscles of the foot. So you see it's supplying the flexor digitorium acerosus. This is what is harrowed here in red. You also see it giving off the abductor digiti minimi. This is what is also seen to be harrowed here in red. Then the lateral plantar nerve is also seen to provide sensory innervations for the lateral anterior one third of the sole. So let's use this image down here to illustrate this. This is the configuration of the sole. And we already presented in our previous slide that the medial anterior two third of the sole is supplied by the medial plantar nerve. And if you look at this configuration here, this is where we have the medial side and this is where we have the lateral side. So on the medial side, we have the medial anterior to third, as we initially stated in our previous slide, giving sensory innervations by the medial plantar nerve. And this is what is captured here at this point. So the lateral anterior one third on this lateral side, which is this region here that is harrowed at this point, will be giving sensory innervations by the lateral plantar nerve. And this is what is captured there also at this point. So you see that the medial anterior to third is giving sensory innervations by the medial plantar nerve, while the lateral anterior one third is giving sensory innervations by the lateral plantar nerve. And that is how it is presented here around the soul. And this is what is illustrated here in this diagram. If we also try to look at the other regions as we have done also in our previous slide, the posterior region here at this point, which is around the heel, the sensory innervation is provided by the medial carcana nerve. And this we have already illustrated in our previous slide. If you remember that the medial carcana nerve is given off by the tibia nerve, why the tibia nerve is seen to part deep to the flexor rectinaculum. So within that canal, it is seen to give up the medial calcana nerve. And this medial calcana nerve is seen to supply the skin around the calcaneus. And this region, of course, is around the heel. So it's seen to give sensory innervations to the heel. And this is what is harrowed here at this point. 
And this region here on the media side, which is highlighted here in black, is giving sensory innovation by the saphenous nerve. We know that the saphenous nerve is a branch of the femoral nerve. This we've established also in our previous slide. Then if you go more on the lateral edge here, that is harrowed here in purple, this region is giving sensory innovation by the sural nerve. And the sural nerve, we already established that it is formed from the tibia and also the common fibula nerve. So this is how the configuration of the sensory innovations of the soul is projected. You can see that the different subregions is provided sensory innovations by different nerve. While the bulk of the sole of the foot is innervated by the medial plantar nerve, and this is followed by the lateral plantar nerve, we also have other minor sub-regions that are also innervated by other nerves. So after providing these innervations, the lateral plantar nerve around the base of the fifth metatarsal bone, if you look at this image up here, you will see that the lateral plantar nerve crosses to the lateral edge so as to assume its position. Of course, along that course, it is seen to give off these innervations that we have highlighted. So as it gets to the base of the fifth metatarsal bone, you see that the lateral plantar nerve finally subdivides into the superficial branch. And this is the superficial branch here, arrowed in yellow, and also the deep branch. And this is the deep branch here that is arrowed here in blue. So you see that they finally terminate into a superficial branch and also a deep branch. And that is after giving off the branches that we have previously highlighted. You see the superficial branch then giving off motor branches to supply some muscles. And this include the flexor digiti minimi brevis and also the, the interosseus of the fourth web space. And it is also seen to provide sensory innovation to the lateral half of the fourth toe and also the fifth toe. If you try to use this image here for illustration, remember when we try to describe the medial plantar nerve, we say that it gives sensory innovations to the medial anterior to third of the soul. And it's also seen to provide sensory innovations for the medial three and also the medial half of the fourth toe. This is what is presented here in this image. So if you look at it, you see that the fourth toe will have a lateral half that is not being innervated by the medial plantar nerve. And of course, this region together with the fifth toe will be left uninnervated. So the innervation of this region will then be provided by the lateral plantar nerve. And this is what is pointed here in black. So you see the lateral half of the fourth toe and also the entire surface of the fifth toe being innervated by the superficial branch of the lateral plantar nerve. So this is how it goes. You can see how the medial and the lateral plantar nerves, which of course have terminal branches of the tibia nerve, are seen to take up specific regions of the soul. So now going to the deep branch of the lateral plantar nerve, having highlighted the different regions that the superficial branch are seen to innervate. So the deep branch will provide innervation to the interosseus of the first three web spaces and also the adductor allosis, the second, third, and also the fourth lumbricar muscle. If you look at it, you see that the superficial branch of the lateral plantar nerve is seen to provide innervation for the fourth web space. This we have highlighted when we try to establish the different regions that the superficial branch of the lateral plantar nerve innervates. So going to the deep branch now, we say that it's seen to innervate the first three web spaces. So the fourth web space is seen to be innervated by the superficial branch of the lateral plantar nerve, while the first three web spaces are seen to be innervated by the deep branch of the lateral plantar nerve. So all in all, we can say that the lateral plantar nerve is seen to give innervation to the four web spaces. Of course, specifically, the first three web spaces are innervated by the deep branch, while the fourth web space is innervated by the superficial branch. Of course, these two branches are terminal branches of the lateral plantar nerve. It is also seen to provide innervation for the adductor allosis and also the second, third, and also fourth lumbricar muscle. If you go back to the media plantar nerve, we see that the media plantar nerve is seen to provide innervation for the first lumbricar muscle. Of course, the deep branch of the lateral plantar nerve is then seen to provide innervation for the second, third, and also the fourth lumbricar muscles. 
You can see how the medial and also the lateral plantar nerves are taking off specific regions also around the foot region. So it's good for us to be able to highlight this. And of course, establish the distinct areas that these two different nerves are seen to innervate. Clinical anatomy. When there is damage to the tibia nerve, we know that the functions that the muscles that the tibia nerve innervates will be impaired. And we've tried to establish during the course of this lecture that the muscles that are located at the posterior part of the leg are seen to exhibit plantar flexion. There is going to be the inability to plantar flex. We also have the tarsal tunnel syndrome. The tarsal tunnel syndrome is a compression of the tibia nerve within the flexor rectinaculum. Remember that the tibia nerve is able to assess the foot as it packs deep to the flexor rectinaculum. And this syndrome is seen to come with pain, tingling effect, and also numbness. So let's check our understanding of this lecture through the following question. And the first one is to list the areas of the lower limb that is supplied by the tibia nerve. The second question is to describe the cause of the tibia nerve. The last question is what is tarsal tunnel syndrome? We also try to establish or define this during the course of this lecture. So thanks for watching this video. Let's continue to stay glued to this channel.